Hey, Jeff Love here from Alternative Heating and Supplies. We are getting a lot of calls and I'm making these videos to help people answer the questions uh, because they're really quite simple. So I have a list of five questions here, so this video should be very quick. And there, we'll start off with question number one. My wood boiler already has a pump on it when you bought it or when you bought it used or something like that. I get that a lot because they, they think that the pump came with it, that's all they need. The pumps are designed, and the answer to the question is pumps are based off your application. If you're putting your wood boiler 20 feet from your house, the pumps that they come with the wood boilers are usually very small. And they do that kind of as a catch to sell you, hey, buy the boiler, we we'll give you a free pump. So this, the pumps come on it are very small. So based on your application, how far your wood boiler is going from your house, how much water, so if you're heating a 1,000 square foot house compared to a 3,000 square foot house, you're gonna need more water flow. So that's the reason why we need to size a pump. I put out other videos with help sizing pumps, but I'll kind of go over it real quick with you. So there's, all manufacturers create several different size pumps. If you call us, you tell us your application, we'll size a pump for you and help you do this. But the fundamentals are what I call the tractor trailer pumps, which, uh, and I'm just gonna show the Taco versions of these. Uh, they are my favorite and they have the best fail rate, referring to the lowest fail rate out there in the business. All the pumps fail rates are all in the same ballpark. So don't think that you're gonna buy a Taco and it has less than 1% fail rate, but the Grundfos is right there too. So I just prefer the Tacos and uh, I've had the best luck with them. And everybody has different choices on pumps, of course. So the Taco 11 is what I call a tractor trailer. It loses a, a lot of material, a lot of water, fast. But if something goes wrong, it can crash, okay? So that's, the Taco 11 is used for very long runs. You know, I usually say 150 one way uh, and down to about 100 feet one way. So there and back, you double it, so 150, is 300, so the Taco 11 should work within a, a 150 one way and back. The Taco 9 is what I call the uh, bulldozer of the pump industry. It moves water, pushes a lot of water, nice, steadily, and slow, but it gets it there and back, nice, steady, and slow, but it does a lot of material. So for a, 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 your application of a 50 to 125 feet, the Taco 9 one way is an excellent pump for you. And especially if you're looking for a steady flow of gallon per minute flow, terrific pump. The Taco 7, I've heard these pumps can pump, uh, it's what I call the household pump. They're designed for zones inside of a, a house system and a boiler system. But I've heard pumps, Taco 7s heating a house of 1500 square feet, 100 feet away, one way. So it is pretty amazing what these pumps can do, but that's how I size the pumps, that's how we size the pumps, but it's all based on your application, how many square feet and the distances. A lot of people get stuck on the head of the pumps. Head is very hard to calculate simply because it depends on radiuses, turns, elbows in the piping, anything else, heat exchanger resistance. There's so many variables kind of remove that from your application or your process because it is very extensive. Everybody thinks, well, it's I, my house is six feet higher, so I got six feet ahead. That's not the way you measure head. So give us a call. We'll help you out with these processes and it, it will just kind of simplify it for you. Now we'll go to question number two. Where do we install the pumps? Everybody, all the manufacturers suggest that I put it on the highest port on the back of the boiler. Excuse my picture here. It's kind of rudimentary here. And I did a round boiler. Uh, there's square ones, there's all different makes and models, but to simplify this, I wanted to make it simple. Manufacturers say to put the pump on the upper levels. They're wrong. I hate to tell you, they're wrong. The problem is, and I did a video on this, is that they'll cavitate. When you're pulling water from the top of a water chamber, just like a drain in a bathtub, you'll create like a tornado effect and you'll suck air, which cavitates the pumps and fails them. The other reason why you want the pump on the bottom port is with the water returning from the house, which is the coldest water, coming into the top of the boiler, you're gonna be sucking off the bottom, going to the house. You're gonna pull that water around the, the 
heating area of the boiler, which is going to give you a cross. So the hottest part of the chamber is up here and the cool. So you're going to get it the coldest water hot as, in the hot area as fast as possible and pull it down and circulate it. It also helps the boiler mix its water. If you have everything pulling from the top, all the hot water is here and you're returning it to the cold, hot water rises. So it's not mixing as well if you do it the other way. Simple, sweet, put the, the pump on the bottom port, sending it to the house. You'll prevent the cavitation. These pumps are also designed to work on pressure on both sides. Now, most of our applications is an open system. That means that there's no pressure on the back side of the pump or the front side of the pump. The pumps that we're talking about here and all the charts that they use, they are using it based off of pressure, 15 pounds of pressure here and 15 pounds of pressure here. Since we do not have the pressure on both sides of our pump, another reason why you mount the pump at the bottom is you got one atmospheric pressure pushing on the back of the pump, which the pressure on the front of the pump is still higher, but it's still something. If it's up high, you don't have that atmospheric pressure on the back of the pump. Another reason to put it in there. So lowest port, done. That's my input. Obviously do it the way you want but that's my recommendations and I just, I've been doing this for about 22 years now. Um, so, and all I do is install boilers. Um, that's my area of expertise. Pump installed indoor, outdoor. Again, I'll give you a couple quick scenarios. These pumps are giant motors. They hum, they make a constant humming and, and uh, just a, uh, a droning sound. So I prefer them on the outside these are cooling fins to keep the pump cool. When we're running these pumps, they're usually in the winter. It's cool outside. You don't hear the noise inside. People want to bring them inside. It's fine. But when you mount them to a wall and they're, the droning sound travels up the walls and goes through the house. Um, I've had numerous people tell me that um, it drives their wives crazy because they hear the droning and it drones and drones and drones. So save your marriage. Put them outside by the stove. Simple, sweet, and easy. Okay. That's my opinion on, and it keeps it cool and quiet. What is the difference between the F4 and the BF4 pumps? Now I'll put up some pictures here, but the F4 pump and the BF4 pumps, as you can see, they're identical. Absolutely identical. The reason why you're going to choose an F4 over a BF4 or vice versa, is simply because of the cartridge. That's the only difference with the pump. If you buy an F4, you can put the upgraded cartridge, which is the BF4, into the F4, and now you've got a upgraded pump. That's the only difference with the two pumps, is the cartridge. The F4 has a basic plain Jane cartridge. The, F, the BF4 J has the bronze cartridge, which is, can be used in uh, domestic applications, but since the pumps are cast iron, you cannot use them in uh, things. So people will say, well, hey, can I put the, the bronze cartridge in this pump and use it for domestic water or potable water? No, because this will rust, okay? The bronze cartridge is a more resilient and better lasting cartridge, and it works better in difficult or hard environments like these wood boilers. That's why I recommend spending a few extra dollars it's only usually $10 to $20 difference on getting the better cartridge. If you have already bought the F4, you can use the better cartridge to put in and replace the cartridge if it fails. What happened to the Taco 24WP pump? This is one of the pumps that came out about 10, 12 years ago, and the wood boiler industry was growing rapidly, and Taco decided to create a pump called the Taco 2400 WP pump, which stood for wood boiler. The wood pump, the pump that they designed was so big, it was even bigger than the Taco 13. Um, and those are for big applications, pumping the water two, 300 feet one way. Uh, but everybody was buying them because it said wood boiler on it. And since they had a wood boiler, they wanted it. The problem is, is everybody bought into that. The pumps were too big. For the applications, they're burning themselves out, failing. So we discontinued the pump uh, simply because 
uh, people weren't listening and they thought that what they wanted and they kept on failing and we couldn't warranty them anymore because the fail rate was just so high on them. It wasn't because of the pump. It was based on the application again. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please write it down at the bottom of the video here. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. And please subscribe and any other video ideas, please let me know and I'll be glad to try to do them as quickly as possible. Thank you and happy heating.